Wow, I didn't even have to say anything and everyone got quiet. How's everyone doing today? Are you done with your food comas and Taco Bell, greasy, whatever? I'm not, so. Um, so uh, this is a freelancer workshop. My name is Mark. And uh, I imagine that there are a few people in here that got kind of sick of their corporate day to day and woke up one day and said, I'm going to be a freelancer. That sounds like fun. And that's all the thought they put into it. <laughs> so I had a nice video I was going to show you, but I don't have audio, so I'm skipping it. Does this look like your business plan? <clears throat> this was, uh, you know, South Park is one of those shows that uh, offends many, but has many, many very good points to it. Uh, this one was in their second season, and it's stuck with me ever since then, and I think they're on like season 850 wazillion now, so it's been a while. Um, this is what I found talking to a lot of people within the community, not just in freelancers, but business owners and whatnot, seems to be a pretty common thing. They wake up one day, they come up with this really great idea, and they're going to make a bunch of money at it, and that's the plan. Right? <laughs> We've all done it, I think. I've done it too. So before we start getting into this, let's, let's look at phase one. I'm not going to cover phase one too much because the idea is there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. You're going to get into a, being a freelancer. But the first few questions you do need to ask yourself is, is your product a service or service needed and wanted? Do you have the tools needed to produce the product? Do you have the money, the time, and the knowledge or access to it? And this is a really important one. Do you have the support from your family and friends? Now, when I ask that question, it's not, did your significant other say, yeah, go ahead, do whatever you want, or did they say, I'm going to be your cheerleader, I'm going to back you up in everything that you do? Because that's really, really important when you go into freelance life, because everything's going to be resting on your shoulders. I hate Dora the Explorer, just for the record. <laughs> And I also hate her husband, Diego, Mr. Dora, whatever you call him. So, but one of the things that Dora does in every single episode, because every episode is exactly the same, is that she roadmaps every single thing that she's going to do, which is that phase two that we're talking about. So one of the things that you have to do when you're road mapping your, or your plan for profit, to get to profit, is you want to start talking about marketing and branding. There's a difference between the two, and I think a lot of people confuse the two. So marketing is about your message or what you have to offer. Branding about, is about who you are, who your company is, what you do. You own your marketing. You own that message that you want to send out. But here's the frustrating part. Your consumers, your clients, they're the ones who own your branding. And what I mean by that, let's use a, a little bit of, a, of an analogy. Let's say that you're single, and you go on Match.com, and you fill out this profile, and you talk about all the great things you are, and you have a Ferrari, and all this money that you have, and you have a yacht, and all this thing, and you're the best thing to ever come along since any, you know, I don't know, anybody. Sliced bread. The best person to come along since sliced bread, yes. Exactly. Um, that's your marketing. You go out on a few dates, and that person discovers you're none of the above. They have formed an opinion of you. That's your branding. You have to watch your branding carefully, and you have to craft it, and you have to decide ahead of time what is the message and what is the image I want to convey about my company and are they the same? <clears throat> so when you're a freelancer, everything, like I said, kind of rests on your shoulders. You're a one-person pr you know, shop a lot of the times. So you have two different types of branding that you have to worry about. You have to have, worry about your professional or your company branding. Do you have a specialty? Are you a low-cost, volume, volume, volume person? Or are you a high-end? 
Do you do custom work? Are you really into accessibility and you want to produce accessibility sites or you know something of that sort? Do you deliver quickly? Um, that's your company brand. But because you're a freelancer, you have to worry about your personal brand too. What do people think of you as a person? Are you professional? Are you knowledgeable? Are you sociable? Do you have integrity? Are you generous? Are you snooty? Are you active in your community? These are all important things too. So you have to focus on your personal and your professional branding, and you need to be aware of it every single day of your business's life. <laughs> so when you get into marketing, you have to think about, who's my market going to be? How am I going to attack that market? What is your marketing message? Does your branding fit within your marketing? So let's say that you like to do high-end sites, and you like to have this professional image, or you like to do professional sites, but all your marketing that you do is goofy, stupid ads. Does that create a, a symmetry between what your marketing message is and what your brand is? What kind of support are you going to offer? You have to think about all those things. So now that you've got a few of these things kind of in mind, it's time to take our little road trip. You've got your map somewhat done. There's a lot more to it. It's probably four hours more worth of talking. Um, so these are what I call rules of the road. These are things that if you don't do, it will catch up to you and it will haunt you. Get yourself a good bank or a good banker. Have Good banks are hard to find, there's no doubt, but you can at least find a contact at a bank that will help you out. Kind of bend the rules a little bit to you know, help you if someone bounces a check to you and maybe waive a fee or something. It's always good to have a contact at a bank. Get a good accountant and a good bookkeeper. Uh, Frank just talked about accounting. I'm not going to get into that a lot. But accountants and attorneys, you need them. Have your marketing plan. Deliver on your promises and communicate with your clients, especially if you can't deliver on your promises. Um, and have the ability to explain why you couldn't. But these are all things that are going to go into your brand. And if you do not cover any of these things, or if you skip any of these things, it will come back to haunt you. I'm not speaking from experience at all. Um, now we have guidelines. These are things you should do because they're good ideas. Stay close to the speed limit. Notice I didn't put that in the rules of the road. Nobody really sticks at the speed limit. Just stick close to it so you don't caught, at, get caught. In other words, pace yourself and be patient. Processes have a purpose. Focus on the road ahead. Do one thing at a time and do it well. Don't get distracted by everything that's to your left and right. Hopefully at the very beginning of your plan, you said, this is what I'm going to do. Stay focused on that and do it well until you're good at it, until people respect you for it, and then move on to other things. And believe me, in this industry, it is so easy to look at the next big thing and forget about the last big thing, which was your great idea and basis for your business to begin with. Check your location often. Totally, brutally assess your progress. Look back and say, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? And if you discover that you're lost, go back to your map that you created at the very beginning. Just because you can do something, this, is, this falls under the category of things you can't unsee. Doesn't mean you should do it. Sometimes things seem like a good idea, and then you produce it, and you're like, holy crap, what was I thinking? <laughs> now, if someone had said that they were going to design this to me, I would have asked, holy crap, what were you thinking to begin with? So I also use Comic Sans for the second thing, just for fun. <laughs> Keep an eye on your surroundings. Stay up to speed on current technologies. Be aware of emerging technologies. Be aware of changing markets. Some, all these things are going to impact you. Consider how they may affect you, and communicate with experts in your field. In the WordPress community, you have so many experts that are so, so generous with their time and, and energy that uh, you're, you're, I, I would 
I would say you're foolish if you do not tap into that. Be prepared for detours, they happen. But always keep your eye on getting back on the main road. <clears throat> and only look back through the rearview mirror. In other words, what I mean by that is don't have regrets. Use data to drive your future decisions. And when you're looking back through the rearview mirror, you're still keeping your eye looking forward. But you, you can take the data that you have from experience that you've had, and you can apply it to what you need to do in order to move forward. Very few good decisions are made out of fear. Hollywood has spoken. I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but the ones that I've seen tend to be the people who get the most frightened are the ones who tend to die the fastest. The people who live are the ones who actually start thinking about what they're doing despite the fear. Fear is a perfectly fine motivator. I think we all have it. We wake up in the morning and we're like, I need to make money and, you know, got to pay the bills. Those are all perfectly good motivators. But when you start taking jobs on the cheap because you're so scared of not being able to pay the bills, and then two weeks later you discover you made a big mistake because you made that choice, because all of a sudden another job came along and you have to say no to it because you're still working on this piece of junk job that, you know, that came along, it happens. So don't make decisions out of fear. Make good, sound, logical decisions. And boom, you've arrived at phase three, profit. I've, I've so overly simplified everything, but, you know, like I said, it's a four-hour thing. But now what? Okay, so you've gotten to the profit point. You stayed on your roadmap. You got there. What are you going to do next? Most people will tell you a good business plan includes an exit strategy. What are you going to do at the end of it? Are you going to retire? Are you going to do it the rest of your life? Are you going to go work for an agency or a shop or something like that? Now, there's something where your personal branding matters. I've seen a lot of times in the WordPress community where people were independents, they were freelancers, but because they built their own personal brand so well, they got absorbed into an agency where they don't have to deal with a lot of the headaches of running a business and whatnot. So I, I can't say, I can't emphasize enough how important the personal brand is to go way back to that. It's really important. Are you going to expand your off offerings? Are you going to close up shop? Are you going to go work for someone else? What's your exit strategy going to be? Put that on the roadmap because at some point in time, you're not going to be doing this anymore, whether it's retirement or whatever, but always keep it in mind. And that's it. Do I have any questions? Or did I answer everything on how to go from beginning to end? Yes. Okay, so the question was, what happens if when you go back and reassess and you, and you get brutally honest with yourself, what happens if you don't feel like you've done enough? Um, do more, but do it smarter. In other words, don't, it goes back to the fear thing. So you might wake up one day and you might say, you know, I didn't do this right. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back, and in fact, I just recently had an experience where I said, you know what? This bit of marketing didn't really work for us. It didn't do, so what am I gonna do? Well, it turned out that we had done something a little bit wrong with the configuration on something. And so I went back and worked through it and whatnot. And what you're doing is you're just being kind of, you're, you're kind of analyzing what went wrong at some point in time. If you're not as far along as you'd like to be, you gotta figure out what it is that you need to do, to, but don't sell out. I mean, that's really, I guess what I'm saying, it's really tough because I think if you want to talk to me about a specific situation, which you might want to, then I could probably help you a little bit more on that. But really all it is, and that's why I said use data. Data is your friend. Look at the data from when you're being brutally honest and assessing things. Look at that data and say, how did this impact where I am today? What could I have done differently? Am I able to do that now or is it too late? And if it's too late, 
and what do I need to do in order to do it? And sometimes the answer might be, it's time to close up shop. I mean, and believe me, I say that because I've been there. I have woken up on more than one occasion and said, you know what, it's time for me to just close up shop. I'm done with it because I made a mistake here or, or whatever. But that's why you, you, you're brutally honest because you're not going to be you're not going to be happy if all you're doing is, is trying to fix something that, that it's too late to fix, I guess. Does that make sense? I mean, it's, it's tough, it, and sometimes it's a tough decision. It, it's always a tough decision, but, you know. Uh, being a freelancer is not easy, for sure. I mean, being in business is not easy. Any other questions? Oh my goodness, way up there. That's an exit strategy. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I, and what's the rest of the question? Um, Boy, I'm going to sound really harsh here, and I don't mean to, but Star Trek has these things called expendable crew members, <laughs> right? And it's really important, and I, I'm in a situation now where I uh, have two business partners, and we re reassess often to make sure that we still have the same vision. And there may come a time where it may feel like there's no possible way you can go on without that person and without them having the same vision as you. But everybody is replaceable. Nobody isn't. I hate to say that. I mean, you, like I said, expendable crew members, they die and they go on, right? I mean, <laughs> on the show, right? You never see them like, okay, show's over. It was only a 10-minute episode, right? So... Um, it's, it's a sad but true part of business, and it's probably one of the hardest things that you have to deal with in business, especially if these are people that, um, whenever I go into a partnership with someone, one of the first questions I ask myself is, do I like this person enough that I can be friends with them? So if you come to a point where you have to part ways, it, it makes it even harder, to be honest. But sometimes you have to make those hard decisions, and business is... It's business, right? So I don't know if that's exactly the answer you wanted, but uh, give them a personal what? Yeah, let them exit. Yeah, because your exit strategy doesn't have to be theirs. You know, you want to do it for the rest of your life. Then say, you know what? You can have an exit strategy. We'll buy you out of your share or whatever and then find someone who can replace them. And they're going to replace them in exactly the same way, but they'll, you know, they may be better, they may be worse, but that's, that's part of the risk you take. Yes, sir. It's reputation, it's opinion, it's what people's opinions are of you, and that's why the frustrating part of that is you work hard to establish your brand, but you don't own your brand. Your customers own your brand. Uh huh. It's it's both. I I tend to look at that as more as marketing. And by the way, I should say I'm not a branding or marketing expert. It's what I feel. I should have said that at the very beginning. It's, what I, it's how I look at branding, is that it, it, branding is owned by the people that you serve. It's their opinion of you. Now, I'm not saying that you can't manipulate it, you can't express it, you can't, but you need to focus on it. If you say you're going to be this, 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 and this, your brand is, did he do this, 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 and this, or did he not do this, this, this? Do you own that Ferrari that you said that you own? Do you, you know, and so... It really is the opinion of what people have of you or your company. Yes.
Right. Correct. And I'm going to use that in my next presentation. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry? I almost, you know what's funny is I almost used papyrus. I almost did. But the thing is, I, I'm saying this in front of like the whole WordPress community here. I don't hate papyrus as much as I hate Comic Sans, so. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, uh, actually, um, huh, all right. So I do actually have a link. It was supposed to be on that slide, which it's not. So I will tweet out the link later. Uh, it's actually already up, so. Any other questions? All right, awesome, thank you very much.